Imagine for a moment that you are walking on your grandfather's farm, near the Appalachian Mountains in North Carolina, and as you pass by some rocks, you come across this beautiful green crystal. Seduced by the beauty of this precious gem, you believe it to be your lucky day, so you pick it up and examine it closely. However, what you don't know is that this crystal is made of uranium, a lethal radioactive element capable of causing the death of over a thousand people with just one dose, and now this poison is in your hands. I know it sounds crazy, and I agree that it's a bit exaggerated, but just as there are beautiful, harmless diamonds that pose no risk to our health, there are crystals made of highly toxic, radioactive elements for us humans. So pay close attention because in today's video, I will reveal to you what these crystals are, where they are found, and what to do to avoid being intoxicated by these lethal treasures, as you could make a real fortune if you know what to do with them. Alright, to be direct and cut the small talk, let's get started. I'm sure you'll be impressed with the most common one, stibnite, and researching thoroughly, I realize that no one has talked about this mineral yet. Stibnite is a mineral composed of antimony sulfide and has a distinctive color ranging from silvery gray to lead gray. It is famous for its unique crystalline structure. In the past, when little was known about this crystal, stibnite was used as an alternative to silver in the production of utensils. Due to its extravagant beauty, many people used it as a luxury ornament, leading to severe poisonings. Back in the day, miners in Okazaki, Japan, produced the world's most beautiful crystals using this ore. Some of them could measure up to 30 centimeters. The problem is that this lethal crystal ended up causing the death of many people, until they discovered that the real issue was in the raw material, which has a similar poisoning effect to arsenic. And since it's easily found in various geological environments around the world, you might come across one of these if you live in countries like China, near the Hunan province, in Tajikistan near Anzab, Russia, South Africa, Mexico, and the United States where deposits are present in the state of Idaho. Stibnite can be found in low-temperature hot springs and is sometimes associated with gold and silver deposits, but it can be found in many other sedimentary formations. So stay alert because you might find another crystal similar to this one, known as chrysotile. This ore is composed of silica, iron, sodium, and oxygen. If it is inhaled, Thousands of tiny crystalline fibers invade the airways and lodge in the organs of the respiratory system, potentially being lethal. While other dangerous minerals act as toxins that make the victim sick, chrysotile causes large-scale mechanical sabotage in the human lungs, destroying lung cells and potentially causing cancer through inhalation. Now, answer me something. In your opinion, looking at the beauty of this crystal, would you say it's toxic? Well, I wouldn't think that this crystal has the power to shut down your vital functions either. After all, it's so beautiful. But know that cinnabar is considered one of the most toxic stones in the world. And this is no exaggeration. It usually forms near volcanoes and other sulfur deposits, and touching or heating them causes their crystals to release mercury vapor. Inhaling or ingesting this vapor or cinnabar dust can cause serious irreversible health damage, including neurological damage. As a result, its use as a pigment has been largely abandoned in favor of safer alternatives. Its beauty is due to its similarity to quartz and its symmetry, in addition to having the highest refractive power of any known mineral. However, it is an extremely fragile crystal compared to quartz, as the hardness of cinnabar is 2 to 2.5 mohs, while quartz has approximately 7 mohs. Being one of the main sources of elemental mercury, since the dawn of human civilization, it has become very important for the development of various technologies. The mercury extracted from this crystal enables the creation of scientific equipment such as thermometers and barometers, as well as the production of chlorine. Not to mention the mercury switches that assist in modern electronic work to this day. Some farmers became very rich by discovering deposits of this mineral on their properties. However, many ended up dying from mercury intoxication released by the crystals. Cinnabar has cultural and symbolic significance in various traditions. Ironically, in Chinese culture, it was associated with immortality and used in ancient funeral rituals. Cinnabar is commonly found in regions with volcanic activity and hydrothermal systems. These geological settings provide the necessary conditions for the formation of cinnabar deposits. The cinnabar formation process begins when hot hydrothermal fluids carrying dissolved mercury come into contact with host rocks containing sulfur-rich minerals. Due to high temperature and pressure, mercury and sulfur react, forming mercury sulfide crystals. As they cool and lose pressure, cinnabar crystals precipitate and grow within rock fissures. And although cinnabar mining for artistic and pigment use has diminished, modern mercury mining still occurs in various parts of the world. 
Some notable regions with cinnabar deposits and mercury mining operations include China, Kyrgyzstan, Algeria, and Spain. And as much as cinnabar displays an impressive red color, don't be seduced by the deadly touch of its beauty. Speaking of a deadly touch, I present to you the main attraction of today's video, a crystal made of uranium, very popular and coveted by gem collectors worldwide for its stunning green hues that captivate the hearts of those who see them. But be careful, don't get too close, because the radiation from this crystal can contaminate you. Ladies and gentlemen, meet Torbernite, a hydrated copper uranium phosphate, widely known as a radioactive mineral. Despite not exhibiting fluorescence, its unique color makes it a crystal like nothing you've ever seen. Like the previously mentioned cinnabar, it is considered soft, reaching 2 to 2.5 in Mohs hardness scale. Its crystals are usually tabular, sometimes pyramidal, and are exclusively green. Its name pays homage to Torbern Olaf Bergman, a professor at Uppsala University in Sweden, considered one of the most important chemists and mineralogists of the 18th century. It can be used as a uranium ore, depending on its concentrations, and because of its strong color crystals, it becomes desired by mineral collectors. But how can you identify such a crystal? Well, the most obvious factor in identifying torbernite is to use a radiation detector to test its radioactivity. However, if it is found with other radioactive minerals, this factor may not be of great help. Therefore, you can identify it by color, which is much easier since torbernite is exclusively green. And maybe now you're wondering, where can we find torbernite? Well, my friend, it is relatively rare, but it occurs in significant quantities in some uranium deposits located in the following countries. Starting with Canada, which is one of the world's largest producers of uranium, with significant deposits in the Athabasca Basin in Saskatchewan. In Kazakhstan, there are large deposits in the Kazilkum Desert and the Balkash area. In Australia, the main deposit is Olympic Dam, and in Russia, the main deposits are located in Transbaikal, Siberia, and the Urals. In the United States, uranium deposits are distributed in various states, including Wyoming, New Mexico, and Utah. In addition to other countries such as Africa, China, Uzbekistan, Brazil, Argentina, Ukraine, France, and South Africa. In all these locations, it is possible to find torbernite. But be careful when looking for these crystals. Protect yourself from radiation. And before we continue, of course, you can already subscribe to our channel. That's right. Take advantage while it's still free. Subscribe now and receive new videos every week. Everything you need to know about identifying gemstones can be found here on this channel. So come with me, because now, I'm going to show you the crystal that I personally call Devil's Gold, better known as Orpiment. It's another gem that raises the alert level on this list since it has high levels of arsenic, an extremely toxic substance. Basically, Orpiment is the child born from the union of sulfur with arsenic and is usually found near hydrothermal sources. Just touching it releases a neurotoxin, causing harm. Orpiment was initially traded in the Roman Empire and used as medicine in China, despite being highly toxic. Throughout human history, it has been used as fly poison and even to poison war arrows. Because of its striking color, it interested alchemists in both China and the West who sought a way to make gold. It was also found in the wall decorations of Tutankhamun's tomb, in ancient Egyptian scrolls, and on the walls of the Taj Mahal. To give you an idea of the danger of this gem, know that it should not be handled without gloves. Specialists still recommend washing your hands thoroughly after any contact with this gem. Never touch your eyes or mouth after contact with the mineral, and by no means should it be within reach of children. Any contact can be fatal, so be aware of places with low-temperature hydrothermal veins or hot springs, as this is where these gems can be found. Also, before we continue, tell me in the comments if you would be afraid to come across any of these gems out there. 